how is Patrick Mahomes looking right now, Mitchell? Good. I mean, question here. Um, obviously, that's the big question here in Kansas City. Yeah, straight and, it is. Um, putting a lot of faith into him, the whole organization. And, um, you know, we wouldn't have done that if, if he didn't progress the way he did last year. Um, you know, coming from his offense in college to uh, the stuff Coach Reed does, um, you know, Coach Reed's not a guy that has a lot of patience for things that don't go well and things that aren't uh, very fine-tuned. And so uh, the fact that we are going to Pat this year really shows the, what, what they think of him. And he's been great. I mean, uh, I played that, that Denver game last year that he played, and right. um, he did a great job in the huddle. I mean, uh, it was pretty seamless. You know, a lot of guys, especially first start on the road and against a, a division opponent, sometimes he gets a little nervous, and I didn't see any of that from him. I mean, uh, the operation was smooth. I mean, you guys know as football guys that – a lot of times on the road in a loud environment, you get a lot of those delayed games and, and things of that nature. We didn't have any of that stuff. Um, the calls got in, they got out, it got quick, things rolled well. And, um, you know, obviously that progression that he showed really um, let them be able to do what they did. And it looks like he could make any throw from any place on the field. Well, he's obviously got special ability from a physical standpoint. I mean, uh, he did some stuff in the preseason. He's fading off to his right and chucks it 50 yards across his body. He did it in our two-minute drive against Denver where he's, fading away and somehow is able to make the throw. So um, from a physical standpoint, I mean, there's nothing he can't do for a quarterback. But, I mean, uh, Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Stone Street here. I mean, Eric, you can give voice. There are Chiefs fans that were who loved Alex Smith. I mean, and he was always a big slick guy. He was always here. He was a big part of this community. A great part of the and Kansas so for, City community, yeah. And so for him to now be in Washington and hand things off to this kid, but when you trade up to go get somebody, you gotta you gotta end up starting them. And I and I feel like the Chiefs did the right thing by Alex. You know, as a person, I think Alex Smith is a, a good guy. I've always been an Alex Smith fan, and a lot of people in Kansas City, you know, weren't Alex Smith fans, which always annoyed the the heck out of me because I think he's a great quarterback, and I'm happy for him in Washington. And obviously, uh, I don't know much about Mahomes' talent. I mean, I'm gonna trust professionals. I'm gonna trust what he says and Coach Reed. I love Coach Reed. The moment Coach Reed came to Kansas City, I was excited. And uh, I, I trust, you You know, every year at this time, mm -hmm. the Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl as far as I'm concerned. I'm, as, I'm ex always the same level of excitement. Now, are you going to stay with your your vow that you won't ever go to the Super yeah, Bowl? I'll never go to a Super Bowl until Mitchell the takes you one? Yeah, until Mitchell takes me to the Super Bowl or the version of his position. Are you aware of that, Mitchell? Yeah, I'm, I'm great with that. Yeah, uh, I have no interest in the Super Bowl until my Chiefs are in it. None. And I respect that. I mean, obviously, as a fan, you know, I'm a fan of football. I like to watch the stuff, and you get to like to watch the Super Bowl and see what happens. And uh, I love the fact that he just it doesn't matter if it's not his team. We love that. Obviously, this is people of Kansas City. They're so passionate about it's the so team. It's so weird when you think about it as an adult because – when I was a kid, another guy was wearing his jersey and playing his position. But my love and passion for the team has never changed, you know, given all the transition that's happened and all the players that have worn the jerseys and played the positions. It's the organization. It's the colors. It's the mascot. It's the environment. It's the city. It's just there's something about Kansas City that, you know, I love. And when the was, Chiefs. When was the last time you missed, you missed a game, Mitchell? Uh, missed a game? It would have been in high school uh, for a Jewish holiday when. Uh, so you got Kofaxed? That I did, yeah. Yom Kippur. Yeah, it was a Friday night, and uh, I believe it was Kol Nidre, um, and I, I went to Temple. I didn't play in the game. So you atoned rather than played. I did, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and I think you've been rewarded for that. <laughs> I have with. Uh, I've been very lucky with some. I think what you're alluding to. I haven't missed a, a game in my six years, and. Um, what about miss, a snap? I haven't missed a snap either. Um, you is know. it a problem talking about that sort of? Are you super? No, I mean or? I don't try to bring it up myself. Um, well, you know, I, I was in did. Cleveland with with the guy Joe Thomas, who has the NFL record for snaps, and you know I was lucky enough to kind of learn from him. And um, like you said, I mean there's been you could just get fortunate with health. I mean so many things can go wrong in the NFL. Um, you just get lucky that the guys don't roll into you at the wrong time. And um, you know small things happen, you fight through it. But um, I learned from from the best in Cleveland and Joe and how to take care of your body, how to prepare and um, obviously, the goal is to stay healthy. Your brother Jeff Schwartz, he's he's like the king of Twitter videos. He smacks people down. That, yeah, that he's he is. great. He's great. There was a, it's an interesting moment when I, I'll, I'll share this here on the show. I don't know if I've ever said this into the microphone. But I had not met your brother, but I followed him on Twitter. Okay. All right? And he was doing stuff at the NFL Network this past playoff season. Yeah. Right? So... It was halftime of, 
uh, all these games that were going on, or one big game, and I, I had to go in the five-minute window of halftime. Yeah. I had to, you know, do some business. And the men's room was locked. So I knocked on the women's room door and went in there. Came out, out of the women's room, and who's standing there in the hallway but your brother. A tiny fella. <laughs> you just look up and... Oh so I just, I just didn't want to, like, you know, acknowledge anything. And then I just saw later on when he tweeted out a video of himself talking about one of the games. I'm like... That was Jeff Schwartz. Yeah. So I direct message him like, let's keep that to ourselves. <laughs> you just, you just <laughs> and I just it. outed myself. But he as long as you guys follow him into the bathroom, no, I think he, you're okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you got, uh, and, and it's not easy, but it is not easy for an offensive lineman to break into sports media. It is not no. easy to do that. You need to be like either a Hall of Famer walking off the field or somebody who's like a 12-time pro bowler right. to have that sort of entree, but he's, he's really working hard. Well, here's the cool yeah. thing about Mitch. I don't, I, don't, I don't know Jeff. I mean, I follow him on Twitter, too, and I like his breakdowns and all that stuff. But learning about the game, like my, the opportunity I get to talk to Mitch and, like, learn about, like, the game that I love so much and from the offensive line's perspective, which is what I wanted to be, is just – Again, you've heard me talk about it before. You know, the, the, the coolest thing about my job and my life and what's happened is that I get to reward 18-year-old, 16-year-old Eric constantly with some of my life experience that I, that I get to do. And this is one of them. Talking about a football game from an O-line's perspective is way up there on something uh, that, that I never imagined I would get to do. And that's the cool thing I've always had with my brother. I mean, he's, he's my older brother. Uh, so he went to college first. He went to the NFL first. He played in Kansas City first. Uh, so I've always had him to talk to. We see the game very similarly. Um, you know, as you said, it is tough for an offensive lineman who hasn't won a Super Bowl and hasn't been to 10 Pro Bowls to, to break into it. I mean, you see with Joe Thomas, I mean, he's just right in. 10 mm -hmm. Pro Bowls in 10 years gets you right into the media world, and um, he's great with it. But my brother, he's done a great job cultivating kind of his thing. Um, as Eric said, I mean, there's a big thirst out there for offensive line play, and and breaking down, and I think... Starts in the trenches, guys. People in general just want this more football knowledge. They just want to know how things work. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with the offensive line play that um, people just don't know about, and he's able to present that information in a pretty easy way to digest. And Baldinger uh, breaks down stuff great, too. He does. He knows how to put his finger on things. Baldy's well, breakdown. Uh, that one on, finger. Rich. No, not Come that on. one. <laughs> wow. Come on, that was a low-hanging. Uh, low it's an offensive line thing. We got bad no, no. fingers. You got, no, actually, you look like you're, you're in good I mean, I got one. Anthony Munoz, when he puts his hand out and then his pinky goes in a 90-degree right angle, that's freaking me out. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I do all the buddy tape stuff. So, all right. Yeah, especially your pinkies. You never leave your pinkies by the, on their own. Oh, my God. I, I have nightmares about getting my thumb pushed back. Just in high school football, I can't imagine what it's like. Well, I showed up, so I showed up to college and... You know, you play in high school, you don't tape, you don't do anything, you don't know any better, you just kind of throw on gloves. And uh, within the first couple of days of, of college training camp, a guy, his thumb gets bent back to his wrist and <laughs> freaks mean, me out. And from then on, thumb tape, hand tape, you just I don't do have it. any thumb problems acting in but, I was about to say, there, there, nothing gets rough and yeah, tumble on the set of my wrist. Family. You know, yeah. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if Cam is too passionate about Fantastic. something. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.